Hi everyone, my name is Milian Trulov. I'm the Vice President Dean of Admission and Financial Aid. Uh, and welcome to the Math Department Roundtable. Uh, we've got three of our math faculty here. We're gonna talk a little bit about the department, uh, the areas of research, and also answer many of your questions. Uh, the intent here is to get to know the faculty and get to know a little bit more about being a math major at Reed. Um, over the course of this session, you're gonna have an opportunity to ask any question um, and to ask a question, you can private chat those to me, and I'm gonna make sure that those questions get to the faculty members and they're gonna answer those. And so um, in a second, I'm gonna ask them to do introductions, uh, and then I'm gonna send a note to you all so you know who I am. Uh, send me any private message with any questions at any time. Uh, I might store them up and ask them all at once, or I might consolidate a few of those, um, but I think we've been able to get to almost all of the questions you ask. Uh, so don't hesitate uh, to jump right in. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna give um, our faculty an opportunity to introduce themselves. You wanna start, Dave? Okay, I'm Dave. I'm uh, in the math department, obviously. Um, I'm not sure what I should say as part of the introduction. I can talk about my research later, I guess. Uh, and I'm Kyle Ormsby. Um, this is my sixth year at Reed as a member of the math department. Um, before I was here, uh, I spent some time at MIT and I got my graduate degree at the University of Michigan. Uh, I study a field called algebraic topology, um, which my colleague uh, Angelica works in as well. Uh, yeah, so I'm Angelica Osorno, and as Kyle said, I'm an algebraic topologist as well. Uh, this is my seventh year at Reed. And uh, I did my PhD at, the, at MIT, and I spent some time at the University of Chicago before coming to Reed. Excellent, so why don't you all tell us a little bit about the math department? So I'm gonna share my screen. We actually have something prepared here. Uh, can you all see my screen now? Sure can. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we actually have a, a little bit of something prepared here. So uh, the Department of Mathematics uh, includes statistics as well. So when you major in math, you can decide to major just in math or major in math with a concentration in statistics. Um, and uh, the basic curriculum, uh, if you, if you want to study mathematics at Reed, is you start with uh, Math 111, which is calculus. Uh, although a lot of students, if they've already taken calculus in high school, they can skip uh, 111 and jump ahead and take Intro to Analysis. And Intro to Analysis is the class where we basically prove everything that you learn in calculus. So you actually finally understand why things are true. Uh, and it's a really fun class. You also, at, as part of it, you get introduced to proofs. Um, another introductory class that we have is discrete structures, which is another class where we teach students how to prove things, but in a very different con context that uh, we learn a little bit of combinatorics, so how to count, uh, a little bit of, of basic number theory, a little bit of, uh, of discrete probability. And this is a class in which we really focus on like how to come up with cool arguments and how to prove things. Uh, we also, uh, as, uh, after intro to analysis, you can take linear algebra, uh, which uh, uh, then leads into abstract algebra. Um, and then uh, we also have our multivariable uh, calculus or vector calculus here. And then that leads into real analysis. And this is the basic uh, math curriculum. And one thing to emphasize is that starting with intro to analysis and moving forward, all of our classes are proof based. So they're really about understanding what is going on and not just sort of like rote uh, computation or anything like that. Even in the calculus class, if you were to take calculus at read, it'd be a very different flavor to what you, you did in high school because it's really always about truly understanding uh, what is going on. And then after you take this class, it's basically, uh, this opens up all this upper, uh, uh, upper division electives, which are, uh, a subset of the classes that are listed here. Um, so uh, I'm not even gonna list them all, you can, you can read them, but, but basically we have the, all these upper level classes that you can take. And uh, as, if you wanna be a math major, you have to take four of those. 
but usually there's enough room to take many, many more than, than just four. Uh, and I'm gonna move on. Uh, there's also uh, the concentration in statistics. You basically take the same uh, basic beginning of, of math, uh, except that there's uh, probability and mathematical statistics, which are classes that you could take as a math major. There are uh, classes that you have to take for the statistics concentration. And then there's the data science classes, which are the ones here at the bottom, um, which you have to take uh, some, some of. Uh, and unfortunately today we don't have any of our statisticians joining us. They would be able to explain a little bit more what's happening in those classes uh, there. Uh, and just to finish, just to give you a little bit of a general information, uh, I already said this, but our, our classes and... Uh, and Helica froze, oh. <laughs> Hi, Helica, are you there with us? I'm here. Oh, my internet is unstable, according to my... Uh -oh. Uh, I can jump in and finish this slide for, for Angie. Um, so uh, like she was explaining, um, we have a, a very rigorous curriculum where students are really getting to delve into the material and understand why things work, um, not just how to use them. Um, there are a couple of interdisciplinary options that are standing um, in the college. So math physics is one of the more popular ones. Um, there's also a mathematics, computer science, standing interdisciplinary major. So in those, um, you end up writing a, a thesis uh, at the end of your time at Reed that uh, straddles those two fields. Um, and you typically have an advisor um, both in mathematics and in that allied field. Um, at Reed, there's also the possibility of doing ad hoc interdisciplinary majors. Um, and so, uh, you know, for instance, I'm working with a thesis student right now who uh, is philosophy, mathematics. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for summer research. Um, some of those are external to read through what are called research experiences for undergraduates. Um, we've had students placed into um, very competitive programs there where they get to spend the summer with a diverse group of students from across the country and sometimes the world uh, working on a mathematics problem. Um, several of us here at Reed also host uh, summer research students, um, and Helica and I have a program where we, we bring in five students uh, from Reed each summer to work on algebraic topology problems. Um, and some other faculty um, have some ad hoc arrangements to work with students um, on research. Um, and of course, the other research opportunity is thesis. So thesis in the mathematics department can really range um, from uh, expository through um, original research uh, that sometimes leads to publications. Um, and uh, that's an opportunity to work with a faculty member for an entire year, um, you know, typically meeting with them uh, for an hour or two each week, um, learning some, you know, advanced mathematics and also um, trying to gain mastery over it and, and do some research. Um, let's see, we also have uh, the standing um, study abroad opportunities uh, the Budapest semester in mathematics and mathematics in Moscow. Um, so those are of course in Hungary and Russia respectively. Um, and if that's something you're interested in, it's uh, many of our students uh, find the opportunity to do that typically in their junior year. Um, and then lastly, uh, our graduates go on to do a lot of things. Um, so Reed is, uh, produces a lot of PhD students um, in graduate programs. Um, but that's, uh, well, that might be, uh, actually, I don't have the data in front of me. It might be a plurality, um, but we have uh, many students going on to jobs in tech um, and uh, jobs in teaching uh, and other, other places as well. Um, so, Angelica, it looks like your internet is, is back. Um, yeah, you and I think... Else? No, I think uh, you you said most of the things that I was gonna I was gonna say. I mean, maybe the one thing that I would add is that uh, our if you graduate with a, a math degree from Reed, uh, employers know kind of like not only that you know specific math, but that like you know how to figure out problems. So, so that's what really leads to all these diverse careers. Is not necessarily the specific knowledge in mathematics, but really the kind of like the the way of thinking that 
that you gain while while being a math major at least. I know if you want to add anything, Dave. I know. I think you covered it pretty much. Yeah. So I think I'm going to stop sharing my screen, except if maybe there's a question that wants us to go back to any of the slides. I don't think so. But but you 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 all sort of um, um, Kyle, you touched on this really briefly, um, and you know. Um, some folks know this, some folks don't. Uh, Reed is the national leader for producing PhDs in STEM. Uh, and um, this is particularly true also of all the sciences, but, but in particular math. Um, what's in the secret sauce? What is it about how we teach our approach that makes students so successful uh, in leaving Reed and continue to succeed in math in their academic careers? I could say a few things, maybe. I, I think, uh, like Angelica said, at the very beginning there, we have this course called 112, which I think is pretty distinctive. In that course, you learn to read and write uh, like you're a mathematician. And from that point on, we treat you as if you were a colleague. And we talk to you in that language. And I think that's uh, fairly unusual. Yeah, I think the thesis experience is another big part of it. Um, so that's that's quite unique to have access to uh, a faculty member um, in such a, a close relationship um, working on advanced mathematics um, that, that really sets our students up to um, be able to hit the ground running in graduate school, um, you know, learning their own subject and, and producing original research. And I think there, there's another aspect, which is that uh, most of us faculty in the math department, they, we are very active doing research. And so we, we are connected to the, uh, the broader research community. So, so for example, one, one of our students who's going to uh, start a PhD next year, uh, she worked with Kyle and I in the summer, and we made sure that our colleagues knew the work that she was doing. So, so people, people knew knew her uh, when she was applying to grad school and that really led to a really uh, successful uh, application when she she was uh, applying for grad school. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. My, my, oh, my thesis student, one of my thesis students this year is, is going to graduate school at the University of Chicago. I guess would all three of us, Kyle and, and Halika and I, we all have connections to the University of Chicago. So I think that that might help someone. Hmm. But, you need, but also the program that we have gives you the horsepower to do mm -hmm. it. You wouldn't want to go there if you didn't have that. That would be kind of miserable. We edged out MIT, Caltech, RVMUD, and other tech schools. And we don't, we don't usually talk about our education in terms of, of competition, but really in this thirst for learning. Um, you, many of you have taught at different places. What, how would you describe a Reed student? How are they similar or different to students you've taught at other, other colleges? Uh, teaching at Reed is is uh, a joy, um, and that is largely because of the students that we have access to. Um, I mean, the Reed ethos is just very uh, intellectual, um, and uh, there's I, I spend zero effort in class, you know, sort of convincing people to engage with the material, um, and that's uh, that's incredible. Everywhere else I've taught, um, there's sort of you know I feel like I'm dragging people. Uh, into the field, whereas here um, folks show up, and even if it's not a major, even if they're not, you know, a math person, um, they're game. They're here to learn, and they expect that I have something interesting to teach them. Thankfully, I do, um, and uh, they, they tend to enjoy it. Yeah, I, I, I want to I wanna add to that. I, I, I mean, I, I want to reiterate this idea that, like, you don't have to ask read students to work, right? And then and uh, they just want to learn for the sake of learning and, and they come to office hours and they want to engage and they, they it's just really fun to talk. Uh, um, and I, I mean, like, so I taught at the University of Chicago and, and, uh, and there, uh, I mean, I, I had a similar feeling for most students, but not all students. And, and at Reed, I think that's a little bit different, but like students really are here because they enjoy learning and they want to they wanna do that. Part, part of that might be, or it's supported by, I think our, the way we, hand, we do uh, the grades here. And um, it helps everyone focus just on the real prize of learning things and not worrying about uh, points on 
the score is and that kind of things. I, I it almost never would have someone come up with me and say, I, you know, I, to, just to talk to me about the score on an exam. It, mm. When that yeah. does happen, it's usually someone who's in their very first semester at Reed and they just haven't learned how to relax about that yet and focus on the, you know, you have the privilege here of just focusing on, uh, on the academics. Mm -hmm. David, will you go into more detail on, on what you mean by how we grade, what exactly that means? Oh, right. So uh, students aren't automatically sent their grades at the end of the semester. If you, uh, and a lot of students don't look at their grades at all. Uh, if you want to see what they are, you can go talk with your advisor. So usually it's, it's that kind of situation. Uh, of course, if you're doing if you're doing poorly in a class, you're, you're going to know it anyway, just from talking with your professor. But there's a system that makes sure that you, that you know, you know that. And do you want to add anything about that, Kyle? Or any other? Well, I, th I think in general that the idea that that the grade, I mean, is there, but it's not is not the main focus of 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 what you're here for. But like really we are here for the learning. And I think I see that even like when a student comes to talk to me after an exam is not because they want an extra point in a specific problem, but because they really want to understand what they did wrong and how to learn and how to do better. And that, that really changes the focus on like what, what the exam is there for or uh, why we're actually like uh, having you take an exam even in the first place is really to make sure that you're learning and not to get a grade. In the end you do get a grade, but you, we are not focused on it. Right, we're on we're on the same side, and we, we you know, everyone understands that. We're just trying to uh, to learn something. Um, I saw a question came in from someone uh, regarding uh, how much opportunity there is for non math majors to take advanced math classes. Um, and th that's definitely a possibility. Um, uh, of course, there is a prerequisite structure. Um, so, you know, you won't be able to take topics and analysis unless you've taken analysis um, beforehand. But uh, we have plenty of physics and computer science students um, who do access our upper level courses. Well, that remind me of um, maybe another topic that's placement when you when you get here we're, we're small enough where I think we do a really good job placing people I mean we have kind of guidelines and a system set up but um, we can really just focus on where you are in mathematics and where you best fit in in the program um, so I think we do a pretty good job but that's right there isn't there isn't a placement exam in mathematics um, there's just uh, informal placement conversations uh, typically, you're just meeting with the faculty member and saying, well, am I ready to take uh, 201? Should I start in 112? What's right for me? And, and just having that discussion is what leads to the placement. So someone wants to know about uh, how many math majors we have. And it's always a little bit hard to count because of the interdisciplinary majors. But we actually, we just graded the junior qual. And, and so we know how many students took the junior qual, and those are people who are intending to have some flavor of math in their degree next year, and that number is 43. And Helen, can you explain the junior qual and what yeah. it is? Yeah. Uh, so, so let me finish uh, talking about the number 43, and then I'll tell you about the junior qual. So, so we know that there's 43 students who are juniors right now who are intending to write a thesis with some flavor of math next year. So they might be pure math majors or maybe math with statistics concentration or maybe math with computer science or math and physics and so on. So that's, that's the number that we have. I think this year maybe we have like something like 20 students or so who are just pure math majors. Um, although uh, I don't have any thesis students this year so I don't know what the actual number is. Uh, maybe my colleagues can help me out with that. Um, now going back to the junior qual, so, uh, everyone at Reed needs to write a thesis. And when you're, so you declare your major usually at the end of your sophomore year. During the junior year, every department has uh, a qualifying exam, which basically tells us whether you're ready or not to write a thesis the year after. Uh, in the math department, the qualifying exam is, is a sit down exam uh, where you, uh, you answer questions that are related to the first few classes that you take as a math major. So if 
if you remember at all from the slides that I showed, and it's fine if you don't, that includes uh, intro to analysis, uh, discrete structures, uh, linear algebra, and multivariable calculus. So basically the freshman and sophomore year classes, we ask you a bunch of questions about, and, and that kind of tells us whether you really have a solid understanding of basic mathematics and whether you're really ready to, to write a thesis uh, the year after. And every department does uh, things a little bit different. Well, I see a question here. It's if, if you uh, major in math with a concentration, can you also have a minor? Uh, minors are a pretty new thing at Reed. We've just uh, fairly recently overhauled our whole college-wide uh, requirement system. And so I think that kind of goes into that conversation of like, what are the college, so you have your requirements from the major, but there's also requirements from the, the college, which uh, really, uh, well, kind of defines what we mean by liberal arts here. It, it spreads you out, but it also makes you concentrate in, in uh, other areas besides, say, if mathematics, if you're a mathematics major. And so as part of that restructuring, some some major, uh, some departments have started offering minors. Uh, some, some in the languages. What are some of the others? Do you, do you guys know, Kyle and Helga? Uh, I think comparative and ethnic studies, rights on ethnic studies is, is adding one. I can't remember either. I, I, have, I haven't yeah, really yeah. been tracking. But uh, to, to specifically answer the question, so concentration is very different than minors. So mathematics with concentration in statistics is just a degree where we're basically telling you which statistics classes to take so that when you go to the outside world, you can say, oh, I really learned a lot of statistics uh, versus a minor, which is a, a slightly new thing. So, so uh, since mathematics with concentrations in, in statistics is just one degree that you can get, you can definitely tack on a minor uh, just because it's a different, different kind of, of thing. So I have a question for our faculty members. One of the things that um, my friends used to always say is that I will never use calculus ever in my life. And I love to ask faculty this question, why do we do calculus? Why is it important to know? Are we gonna use it? Uh, has, has anyone seen this, this graph regarding the amount of time we've all spent looking at exponential graphs over the past <laughs> uh, month or so? Um, it's, uh, it looks uh, unsurprisingly like an exponential graph. Um, I, I actually, it's been amazing. Um, uh, obviously this is a difficult uh, moment for everyone and I don't want to make a light of the, um, the pandemic. Um, but as a mathematician, uh, I've felt uh, surprisingly uh, relevant uh, looking at the, the data that's been coming out with regards to infection rates etc. Um, and it's been, there's actually been some great reporting, especially in the Washington Post and the Financial Times, um, really unpacking uh, for a lay audience, um, you know, what something like exponential growth means and how one can produce something like a log plot in order to understand that. And, you know, um, you know, you even kind of, they don't typically use the words, but they're basically saying that, you know, the derivative of this function is proportional to the function itself. Um, and so the language of calculus is what allows anyone to be able to understand what that, what that really means. And so um, I, I think everyone's become a bit of an amateur epidemiologist lately, and calculus is, is crucial in, in understanding uh, the, the phenomena there. Maybe I could add one other thing. Um, it sometimes seems to me that the whole, our whole education system here in mathematics, starting from when you're very young, is to lead you to this belief that calculus is the ultimate, you know, that it's the peak of mathematics. But I think one of the joys of, of pursuing mathematics is all of a sudden, uh, if you look back at our curriculum, there's a, a point where the whole, this immense world that you didn't know existed is, is there. And, and calculus then is, is it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's part of mathematics, but there are other parts that are just as, as big and vibrant. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and sort of like to, to add to that, in a way like calculus, I mean, as you can see it in, a, in our curriculum, is the beginning, right? Like and opening up and really understanding uh, the proofs be, behind like what you, what you learn in high school. That's really where, where we get started and we're like, oh, this, like this whole world that you can explore if you just kind of like go beyond. 
uh, calculus. So I think the question about whether you need calculus or not is more like, well, if you're not going to be a math major and you want to take any mathematics, what would you take, right? And what is really going to be useful? And as Kyle said, like there's many applications of calculus um, uh, outside of mathematics, but there's also many applications of statistics outside of mathematics or discrete structures. So if you're not going to be a math major, we really think that there is we have all these classes that don't have any prereqs that students can take and, and it doesn't have to be calculus if, if you're not going to be a math major necessarily. Uh, for example, if you're going to be a we, physics major, you definitely need calculus, right? And, and, and that's, that's why physics requires uh, their students to take calculus. Uh, but yeah, there's many, many interesting and useful mathematics that we offer that don't have any prereqs that students can take if they're not going to be math majors. Angelica mentioned discrete structure. So an example of a discrete structure would be the internet. You know, that's that's something where you can apply calculus, but that's not the main tool that you would use to study those kind of interconnected systems like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in biology now, it's become this information science, and that's uh, it's it's developed some new biology, but also new mathematics to handle that situation, which is uh, not saw... primarily calculus. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just to change the topic a bit, I saw a question come in here regarding um, whether it was possible to double major with math and another subject, um, maybe maybe music. Um, so uh, in the strict sense, yes, it's possible. Um, double majors at Reed are pretty rare um, for the simple reason that if you're going to have two majors, um, then you need to write two theses, uh, one for each major. So some students do take that on, um, but it's um, uh, maybe Milian knows the statistics. I, I'm guessing it's uh, just just a couple, uh, maybe it's one or two a year. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in my experience, those have been often there. Uh, there's some regret associated with that that you had to compromise somehow. Yeah. yeah one of my thesis students last year was uh, did a double major with math and philosophy. And at the end, she says she probably shouldn't have done it. None of the theses were to her uh, level of satisfaction because she had to split her time writing both. So she would have rather do just one of them and do a much better job at it than, than sort of like splitting her time in, in two. And when I, and when I, I would guess, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Uh, well, nope. when I talk nope. to my, nope. I'm gonna go. Uh, <laughs> when I talk to my uh, advisees, uh, my academic advisees about double majoring, um, the, the conversation I have is, well, you know, what does, what does that double major signify to the outside world? Um, and, you know, sure, it's some form of credentialing, right? Telling everyone in this very pat way, like, hi, I know music and math. Um, but, you know, you can also do something like get a math major and just take a bunch of music courses along the way. Um, and no, you don't have, you know, that, that stamp right there front and center. Um, but your transcript is still going to have a bunch of music classes on it. Um, and that's something that you can still, you know, uh, report on your resume and talk to people about. And so um, you, I think it's just really important to tease out why uh, you would want a double major. And, and to add a little bit onto, uh, onto what Kyle was saying, one of the things about the math degree is that it doesn't have that many requirements in terms of number. So if you think that at Reed, you have to take a total of 30 classes, and I didn't count, but like the math major doesn't take that many of them. You really have a lot of room to just both take the distribution requirements, but also beyond that, take whatever classes you want. So we do have students who, for example, take a ton of music classes, and they still graduate with a math major, but then they really were able to explore deeply into the, uh, the music major without necessarily getting a double major. Uh, there's another question about Angelica, and just make two two quick points just to put sort of a fine fine um, end note on this, um, uh, and I think Kyle touched on this really well, which is when you want to major in two things, what is your goal? And that's the conversation you have with your advisors: how you obtain that educational goal of interest, and it may not be um, specifically majoring in two things, but it might also be. Um, taking classes in different departments, meeting with an advisor in another department. It doesn't mean you walk away from read with any less uh, education or informed content about those topics. And so that's, that's really important for folks to understand. And the second thing is uh, read doesn't really do sort of your typical intro courses. So even the first biology course 
you're sitting in that course with students who are majoring in biology and students who are majoring in English. Uh, and that goes for every program. And that's really different. You're expected to, to be experts on the information. And so um, these courses that you're taking in other distribution requirements aren't just cursory cor courses where you kind of know the stuff, but not officially. They, they are true courses uh, in, 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 in every class. And I don't know if uh, folks just want to double down on any, anything I've just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, even within the math department, right? Like our, our intro classes, like you didn't, didn't see like a math for poets, right? Or, um, or that like we have different flavors of calculus, like everyone who's going to take calculus, whether they're a math major or not, like they take the same class. Um, now, uh, sort of like linking that to the question about the, the class sizes. So this is something that we do differently in the math department than in other departments at Reed is that uh, even at the intro level, all of our classes are capped at 24. Uh, so instead of having one giant lecture of calculus, we have seven uh, lectures of calculus in, in, in the fall semester. And so uh, at any point, whenever you're taking a math class, you're gonna have at most 23 classmates and you're gonna be interacting very closely with your faculty member, uh, with, with your professor. Uh, uh, even at, at the upper level, like uh, for example, when we have too many students who want to take abstract algebra, we break it up into two sections. So again, like the, the class itself is, is never more than uh, 24. Sometimes like we have to like stretch it a little bit when we have too much demand, but like it's really never more than 30 uh, students in, in, in one of our classes. And that's across the whole, the whole uh, curriculum. So starting with calculus, going all the way to our uh, 400 level classes, they always are uh, rather and, small. And typically there, as you get into the upper level classes, the 300 and 400 level, um, those, those typically run closer to like 10 to 12 students. So you really form some close relationships with those peers um, and, and get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from the faculty. Mm -hmm. Are they more discussion-based or lecture-based? That kind of depends on the, on the professor uh, and I mean, we're all trying to, to have our, I mean, if their lecture, even if their lecture to have a lot of discussion as part of it, to have a lot of conversation with, your, with, with, with classmates, to have moments in which we break into groups and we work things together. Um, and so, so for example, when I teach uh, most of my classes, they're very, very interactive. And, and even at the moment when I'm lecturing and I'm presenting a proof, I'm asking students constantly for their input on how, how to continue the proof, right? What's my next step? Uh, and so on. Uh, and when, when we're working out examples, the students work out the examples and then, like, and then we talk about it as a group. Uh, but there's classes where we're doing things completely different. And, and so actually Kyle and Dave are, are more experts in this, but in discrete structures, we actually, we're completely flipping things in that um, students learn the material ahead of lecture, or lecture, ahead of class time, and then they come into class to work with each other, and, and the faculty member is there to facilitate making sure that, that students are engaging with the material and so on, but, but really class time is devoted to students working with each other and then sharing their ideas. Um, so we're all doing that at some level, uh, um, but there's some classes where we're really like going full on with that. Hello again. It turns out Zoom did. here could use your laptops very quickly. <laughs> you saw me running to get my cord, and uh, but it was a little bit too late. Good to have you back. Thank you. Uh, I saw a, a question here. Um, how frequently do math majors from Reed pursue a career in finance? Um, and I think that's uh, maybe less typical uh, of our majors, but I have. Um, my very first thesis student uh, is currently working in, in finance, um, and I know it is uh, something that people uh, do pursue. We don't have any courses that are in, say, financial mathematics, um, but I think um, uh, students who are headed in that direction um, are probably also maybe looking at the economics major. Um, there's now a quantitative economics major, um, and so there are there are definitely some some options at Reed if if that's the sort of thing you're interested in. And I, I think that a lot of the students who are doing math with concentration in statistics uh, are also mm -hmm. thinking about that as, as, as a, so probably it, 
if, if we were to look at those students, there's probably a lot more who are pursuing careers in finance. That's a good point, yeah. So um, we're, we're closing down, uh, we're moving towards the end of our session, so I think we just have a, a couple more questions. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna jump to, I'm gonna ask my last question first uh, of the last two questions. Um, you all have experience at other colleges, um, but you've been at Reed for a long while. Um, this is where you're sharing the information. Um, what is it about Reed? Uh, what would you want to share if there were two things about Reed you want to, really wanted to express, both one, sen one sentence? Um, what would they be? Well, I would. I think it's already been said. It's just uh, our students. That's the biggest attraction here for everyone. I think in this whole community that that's intensely focused on this. Uh, really fun thing of learning new things. And, and to add to that for me is, is the students, but also the fact that I, I am rewarded for my interaction with students, right? So it's not just that I get like that the students are great, but I also that like the college wants me to interact closely with students and that, and, and students are here to interact closely with me. And I think that really makes a, a big difference uh, for me in my day to day work that I really enjoy interacting with students and I get to do that and, and the college likes it. I, I, uh, I would definitely triple down on the passion for learning uh, aspect. Um, and then my second thing would be um, the canyon, um, <laughs> which uh, it, is, it is so regrettable here on this beautiful spring day that you cannot walk across the Great Lawn, uh, go around Elliott Hall and then uh, take the little trail down to um, the creek, uh, which we affectionately call the canyon. It's, it's a bit of a gully, um, but it's a beautiful natural area, and um, it's really one of the prettiest campuses that, that I've spent time on. All right. Well, I'm going to give you all the last word if you'd share, like to share anything, either about the math department or uh, give our students any words of advice as they're uh, both learning about Reed for some of them and for others making a decision about where they want to be for four years. Uh, and then once you're done, we're going to shut down our session. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is just the, the spirit of collaboration in the mathematics department. Um, there's a lot of students working with each other and um, uh, I'd love to take credit for, uh, along with my fellow faculty members for all the learning that happens here, but um, really so much is with peers um, and having access to that peer group is, is a huge part of what makes Reed special. Um, and I think, I think the mathematics department is doing an especially good job of encouraging and facilitating um, that collaboration. Um, so take advantage of that if you come here. Um, find that study partner, find that group to work with um, and support each other. Uh, I, I'm going to go in a slightly different direction. I think uh, when you're trying to make those decisions of where to go to college, it might seem like uh, it, it might seem really hard to make the decision because you're closing down a bunch of doors just to, to when you're deciding on one. But uh, in the end, you're probably you're probably not going to make a wrong choice. Uh, it's just different choices would lead to slightly different outcomes. But but probably all the choices are 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 good. So it's good to think about it. It's good to analyze. It's good to like write down pros and cons lists and so on. But in the end, just uh, probably all choices are, are okay. So don't agonize it too much. But come to read. But come to read. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have two kids. They both are through with college now and uh, almost both through, through uh, with graduate school. But uh, one went to a big research school and she loved it there. It was a big, the campus, it could not be uglier, but she loved it as soon as she saw it. And son came to, to read and uh, he, um, he just thrived here. He did physics, chemistry, but he took a lot of music um, and just had a great time. And uh, yeah, I was known pretty much him for the other faculty for while he was here. I said, you're, you're dead. <laughs> but he had a, I don't know. Yeah. And my son, he really didn't thrive here, like I said. Well, I wanna, I wanna thank you all for joining us. Uh, one thing I always say is it, it's really easy, I think when you're making a decision to think about, you know, next year, that freshman year, 
uh, you know, where you're going to live, who you're going to live with. And I think particularly uh, in the unique circumstances we all live in right now, sometimes that's a bit cloudy. Uh, but one thing I'll say, and I've always said this, is think about who you are your senior year. And um, as Malika really alluded to, um, you know, there are great options, but who you are your senior year after a result of going to one school versus another school, that version of you may be slightly different. And you all are savvy enough to take into consideration all of this data you learn and to figure out how Reed or another school might develop you differently uh, to that human you are uh, once you've attended for four years. Um, I say this to invite you to not just keep your vision out for a year, but to look out for four years. Um, and that also feels much better because I know things will get better. Um, but that also helps you figure out how these colleges are going to impact your lives and your development. Um, so that's my uh, word of advice uh, from 20 years of admission experience, and I hope it's helpful. Uh, and it's good to see uh, some of you return to our information session. I see a, a name or two that we've seen before. Uh, and I want to thank our faculty for joining us today. Um, again, um, next week, um, we have about um, four to six different sessions uh, every day. So uh, tonight, you'll receive an email to talk about uh, the increased number of events that we have next week. I hope you join us. Uh, they're going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so check them out. Uh, they'll be live on the website tomorrow. And I hope to see you all soon. Have a great day.